Okay, so it's reporting to my computer. And then I'll, uh, once it uploads after we're done, yeah, I'll send you a wee transfer. It'll be in there. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then I'll upload it to, um, so you, you, you're going to press record now? Yeah, it's recording. Oh, it's recording. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I'll try to edit this after then. Um, so, yeah, Brian, uh, maybe we'll do it this way. Give a little intro for people that know you, don't know you. Um, I know I, I met you on that course you guys did. Uh, it was a great course. Um, uh, you guys were talking all about Moxie and, and how to use it. So um, I know you were used to work with Jörg. Is that right? And uh, Feldman yeah. back in the day. And um, then now you're working down in Texas somewhat with the group down there. So yeah. maybe you can tell us about that and you can get into the NX a little bit. Um, and sure. we can, yeah, move ahead. So, uh, well, thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, my, my way back when, when I started, I'm 55 years old, um, the other day. And, uh, so when I, when I started training, it was always, you know, I want to know why, 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 is, why do we run these 400 meters? Why do we run the, you know, for hockey players or for different types of athletes and all these questions I had, and there wasn't a lot of answers back then. Yeah. Uh, you know, way back when, and, and it's not like nowadays, it's so incredible. Um, but what really changed, so I, I was training athletes for uh, quite a few years. And then what really happened when I moved out to coach hockey in, in, in BC, that's where I met Jörg Feldman. And now he's, you know, he's of all the people I've met in my whole lifetime. Uh, none better than that guy, the way he thinks and the way he rips things apart and always open. It's like, we now we call it uh, ever evolving ideas. You know, science science is really just a bunch of real smart guys with great ideas. It takes some technology like the Moxie and different uh, pieces of equipment to prove or disprove those ideas, right? Mm -hmm. But then, yet we're still only seeing a piece of the puzzle. Or not? I don't know if we'll ever ever see the whole thing, but that piece of the puzzle really helps our training and, and our health and performance. So. So with Jörg, he had all these real neat pieces of equipment and we just methodically trained and tested and assessed and played and we wouldn't say nothing until we uh, at least tested a thousand athletes. Right? And then he had this group of really smart guys, you know, like the guy from the VO2 Master and Panoli and all these different guys that we played with and shared ideas. Um, some real cool guys uh, from over in Czechoslovakia and Italy and and uh, every once in a while, we'd get together and, and, and just hash out ideas, argue. Uh, I'm married an Italian, so I love to argue at the supper table. It's just talking really loud. And uh, so mm. this group, we, we figured out a lot of different ideas and we had to back it up in the sense that it had to be practical. Now, for me, uh, it was such a different world because I was in with these PhDs, you know, these that had the intellectual understanding, like, any research they got it you know they, they they would tell you about it and for me i came in the back way in the sense that i came in from the practical reasoning i got to see it mm -hmm. be able to test it and then i got to be able yeah. to train it and then do we see if there's a difference and what difference yeah you know and the beauty of and and there's a big difference in that intellectual understanding and the the practical reasoning of it it can be a very big difference right and what I mean by that is in the course we took um, with Evolved Health and Performance is you have to learn how we speak and you've got to be able to picture it, right? So we'll just go in basic ideas and it, it, it yes, it goes a lot deeper, but to understand it, there's a cell and that cell, this whole thing is about survival. Now, how robust can we make that cell? That's our health and performance. Mm -hmm. This happens to be 30 trillion of those things in our body, right? Yeah. So, but it makes up to one person. But each cell is an individual itself. Now, with that, how can we train them to become more robust? How can we see that? How can we assess it? So if we look at the basics of the oxygen and CO2, if you understand that that change in balance, that's always in the, it's not 50-50, obviously, but it, it, there's a balance. And that's mm -hmm. just an easy way to understand that 
once the CO2 goes up and the O2 goes down or vice versa, that changes everything in the body. Mm -hmm. the body has to react to every little change in that balance. So that's your breathing. So the breathing is really the master controller because once I change my breathing, now I create, say, a vasodilation with the CO2 mm -hmm. up or a constriction, the opposite, it goes down. Mm -hmm. Well, then how, what happens in the muscle? If the CO2 is up higher because it moves by pressure, it can unload in the muscle. Mm -hmm. Now, after a bit of time, you know, say the, the, the cab, the delivery system takes about 40 seconds, give or take. As, pardon me, the CO2 starts to rise up in the lungs, that same cab cannot pick up those four oxygens anymore. Yeah. It can only pick up three or two. So it'll unload them all. So you're going you're gonna to see you're going to run into a problem. Well, how do we see that? The theory is great of that. It makes sense to me. Well, we see that on the MOXIE. Mm -hmm. We see how you load more SMO2 or you don't. Now, the important thing about the MOXIE is to understand that the THP is the most important thing. That's the size of the jar. Mm -hmm. right? Is the jar this big or is the big jar this big? So if the jar is this big and it holds, say, 10 oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if the jar shrinks down to this one and it only holds eight? If I have five, if I have five oxygen in a jar that holds 10, that's 50%. Mm -hmm. What if this jar goes down, the THB goes down in my in my muscle? And that same five oxygen or in a jar that holds eight, I have a higher percentage. Did my percentage of oxygen go up? No, just a smaller jar, right? Mm -hmm. You could argue it out either way, but it, we have to be very careful. So there's, of the technology, now we have to, we have to be very careful the limitations of the technology so that we understand it. So, the same language, if you can understand that when I say there's a balance of CO2 and O2, this is how it unloads if the CO2 goes up, and this is what happens if it goes down. And then how does the cardiac system react to that? Every system, in my, how's my kidneys react? So when I change that breathing, the master controller, that's going to change everything in that system. Mm -hmm. Plus here, right? It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. You put the moxie on. And you have like eight hockey players lined up or whatever type of athletes, soccer players. And you're going to have them do some whatever uh, pattern, skill pattern, whatever they're doing, full out intensity. And you're looking, you said, okay, I'm going to count down from 10 and then we go. And all of a sudden you see a couple of the athletes, the THB starts to go down the SMO2. They haven't even moved. Mm -hmm. And if you watch, they're holding their breath or they're breathing fast and shallow. Mm -hmm. And as they do that, now they're creating tension, right? It's like some athletes are standing there and they're so relaxed, but some athletes are standing there and they're very tense. So yeah. they're already using that just from a thought. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of, um, that's where I come from in the sense that, you know, now from your guy moved into, um, you know, I spent many years over a decade with your <laughs> It's kind of hard to leave a smart guy like that. Uh, but in that time, I went out and I started working with different uh, trainers. So I'd come to, you know, your place and work with you for a few days and see what you do and, and show you the, the, put the moxies on and, and see if what we think that training program is doing, is it really doing that? Right? Yep. Now, we also, uh, from there, then I, I looked for a new Jurg. And I found a guy, um, well, two guys actually, it was bonus in Evolve Health and Performance, which was Aaron Davies and Patrick Este, right? Yep. And Aaron's one of those guys that he would do, he was Jurg to me in that sense, even though he says I'm Jurg to him. <laughs> it's he'll think things down and do the research to get down to the cellular level. And then yep. I, I can think. I see the picture and I'm the practical guy. I'll take those ideas and I'll go play with them. And then we just, you know, we argue it out and okay, we got, now we're going to test these things on a thousand people and see if we can produce that. Yeah. Sounds like a great team. Oh, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. The best of both worlds, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know you, you guys did a great job on that course. Uh, 
anybody's interested, uh, you can look at Evolve and find out when you're offering it again. It's online at the moment. Um, I think you guys were offering it in person until COVID struck, right? Mm -hmm. And then going through, um, you go through the, the different patterns and stuff that you might see with Moxie and then training it. And so that's, uh, yeah, it was a good course. I enjoyed it. One of the things um, I thought would be helpful if, if this is okay, is if we talk about some of the things that you're talking about, what people might see. So we try to make it as practical as possible because mm -hmm. people are using Moxie. And so I think as you already indicated about the using the bottle as the analogy is that sometimes we just look at say SMO2 and we forget about THB. Um, so maybe if we talk about, okay, that, that hockey player who you talk about, what would we see if they're doing this contraction? So we see SMO2 drop, we see THB drop. Um, and then, you know, you go from there. So what might be, the other thing you talked about was if carbon dioxide levels raise versus lower versus the muscle versus the lung, what might be some things that people, like if, if you're new and you're trying to learn, I know you've talked a lot about just playing with it, putting mm -hmm. it on for everything you do um, and looking, learning watching what might be some other things that people might look and learn from or patterns like if we see so for instance I, when i reached out to you it was thb was getting to a point where initially you get this get this drop then it goes for a bit and now all of a sudden part way through it, it goes up it just starts going up and so the other thing is now i think it might be helpful because you always talk about the delayed response Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um so in a traditional uh step test let's say without the rest we almost got to wait till the end to see actually what that's doing i guess i'm assuming mm -hmm. um so at the end of that test let's say it goes up right so we see thb go woo, and then when the rest period starts that the individual stops we see i we see that thb reading increase Mm -hmm. Now, with that THB reading going up, SMO2 is actually going down. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, just the other day, I did another test where I see THB drop, then go up, and then same thing happening, SMO2 was, SMO2 was going down. But at the rest period, there was a really short um, steady state, and then it dropped. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could say, well, what, what might be happening or what could be things that we might look for in those kind of things versus uh, THB, because uh, you've already talked with THB going down and, and SMO2 and going up. Is it really going up? That's, mm -hmm. that's a good question. But maybe, yeah. Is that okay? Talk about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. Anything you want to chat about. So um, when you first get that, that moxie and we talk about playing, um, there's some basic things to understand with it. So... Uh, there's always a delay, right? So, and you, you know this when, if you've ever had a heart rate monitor, right? You start running, it doesn't all of a sudden go to 180, right? It's, mm -hmm. linear, you know, 60, 61, 62, 63, depending on your intensity, how fast you're moving. And you'll really notice the difference is when you stop. So say I sprint, you know, from here to the telephone pole and I stop, does my heart rate just go down? Or does it keep going up for a bit, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's a delay. It's still got to do some work because I'm breathing. There's all these systems still, still working. Yep. When I squeeze my muscle, does it instantly let go? Maybe you're like this, but what if I, I ran a certain distance or I lifted some heavy weight? Does it let go right away, right? That's what the moxie will show you. You go into an ISO hold, right? And mm -hmm. the THB is, is showing you two things, basically. It's showing you the amount of blood flow and whether it's going up, down, or staying the same. That's super cool, right? And important. And it also shows you what type of force you're creating. So if I'm, if I'm, if the, if I'm biking, running, or doing a squat and the THB goes down, that means I'm creating, if we think of a garden hose, and I'm just stepping on the garden hose, or if you understand the muscles and there's a, there's a pipe inside your delivery system, the muscle is pressuring it. So it's less, less blood flow going through. If I step down in the garden hose, there's less water. That's a compression. Mm -hmm. 
if I have more strength or if I want to push harder, I'm going to push right down on that garden hose and it starts to blow up like those stretchy ones. Mm -hmm. Well, same within the muscle. It's, it squeezes and squeezes off the return to the heart. Mm -hmm. So it balloons up. That ballooning, if you just imagine the ballooning, that's where your moxie is. And that's when you see the THB go up. Mm -hmm. Called a venous occlusion. They've actually even kind of, if you, with your athletes, when you test their, their one rep max and go off percentages, so you can just take dumbbells. Uh, we like at a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. and just right to here because there's no, you know, there's no less cheating. Right? Yes. Not yeah. that you're doing it on purpose, but we all do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The way so then you just start off with like five pounds, right. And do yeah. some curls with the moxie and you'll see it creates compression. The, the THB goes down mm. F 10 pounds, yeah. 15 pounds. All of a sudden, instead of going down, it goes up. That's where you've shut the blood flow off. It's ballooning up. And now it's a venous occlusion. Mm -hmm. Heavier, 30 pounds. All of a sudden, it starts to go down, goes up. So it's a venous occlusion. And then it goes straight across. That means I've stepped on the garden hose. And the moxie's in between. It's just a steady state in here. Because nothing's coming in, nothing's going out. Mm -hmm. These are some basics that you really have to understand, right? Yep. That... that one, the THB shows the, the volume going through. Yeah. So if I'm just sitting here, right, and I get up and I start to move this nice and slow, right? Now, at first, there's going to be a little compression force so that the THB will go down. Yep. And then the cardiac system and the breathing system catch up and then they'll go up. It's rising mm -hmm. up because yep. the engine's starting to go higher RPMs. Yep. Right. If you think of a car. So, but now if I start to walk a little faster, it might level off because now the cardiac, the engine has to catch up. Mm -hmm. It's called a cardiopulmonary. The both systems have to work together to catch up to the effort. Then it might rise up again because they go a little too far. They go a little too fast, right? Oh, I go a little faster. Now it starts to drop down. Now we've got to a point where this is not delivering the amount, same amount that I'm using. Mm -hmm. You'll see the THB start to go down because the muscle's starting to compress more, right? Yep. That's just the basics understanding. And then you got to think of the muscle. There's, I'm going to jump ahead, but it, it's a, it's a good point to understand. All muscles don't contract and relax the same. But anything I'm saying here, do not do not believe me. Just go get a moxie and put it on and play. You'll see. Ooh, right? yep. So if I put it on my forearm and I squeeze, create a compression. Then I squeeze and hold, create a venous occlusion. Then I squeeze and hold, create an arterial. We'll put it on my leg and do the same thing. You're going to see differences, right? Some Ideally, what coordination is, the ability to contract and relax. The faster you can do it, the more coordinated you are. Mm -hmm. When we see those little guys hitting a freaking golf ball 300, you're like 300 yards. You're like, what? Look at the size of you. Yeah. Just go super smooth and coordinated. You can contract and relax, right? When they throw that punch super fast, right? And it comes back even faster. Or a person's running, you're like, oh my goodness, it looks so graceful. That's coordination. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on where they're putting this moxie in between um is it the sixth and seventh rib or whatever the, what it is and they're 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 saying they're measuring the breathing muscles i'm like right on let's go test it is it really the breathing muscles well put a vo2 master on or put a panoli on or put even a bio harness what measures the rib cage moving right and there's other devices out there yep. and see if what we think we're measuring is what we're measuring you know what i mean yeah I'm sure that we're seeing that and there's you know, when you look at research of the diaphragm, there's a lot of stuff that says the diaphragm contracts and then it relaxes way, way slower. So on that exhale, if they say, depending on the, the, the length of the exhale, but on a, a normal natural exhale, half the time of the exhale is the diaphragm relaxing, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to be, we play, but we've got to be careful of, of trying to think that the equipment does more than it does. The beauty of the equipment is showing you what it does. 
So when you put amoxy on and you squeeze and it creates a compression, squeeze harder, creates a venous occlusion, squeeze even harder an arterial occlusion, and then just lay my arm down and watch the recovery, right? If mm -hmm. I was squeezing hard, like you said, you're talking about the S, the THB should start rising up. I'm not using anything. I'm just relaxing the SMO2, the oxygen to start loading up. That's what should happen. Mm -hmm. Or if I take my hand and I put it up here, I've changed the blood flow, the heart, the pump is pumping to a different position. Mm -hmm. When we were playing with hockey players, we would have them jump on the ice, do a hard shift, exact same movement pattern, come back to the bench and sit there. And we'd watch the recovery, the THB come back up to the recovery level and the SMO2 load the oxygen. Well, what if, what if they sat on their knees? What if they brought their legs and bent it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, or what mm -hmm. if they came back mm -hmm. and they laid their legs out like they were sitting in a, in a lazy boy chair? What if yep. they got on a bike and pedaled with wooden pedals? What if they laid on the floor and put their feet up against the wall? How fast would the recovery be? Right. So if you think of a hose, a garden hose, what if I bent the garden hose? Does it limit the blood flow, the water through it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a funny story. I told I, I was working with the junior team and I was telling the, the coach this is the assistant coach at that time. Real keen guy. He's the head coach there now. And I said, he goes, well, what's the quickest way for them to recover? Like their blood flow and in, in this. Yeah. I said, well, put your legs straight as straight as you can. Okay, so we move the benches back from the the boards. I said, yeah, you can if you can if you yeah. can move the benches back, you'll have more room. Like then he's saying, well, what about the visitors, the other team? Do we want to move the bench closer? And I said, well, that's you know that's that's pretty. I wouldn't do that, but yes, it would limit their blood flow a bit. Then I went back about a month later. They did that. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> it's just like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's awesome. They just yeah. put it right in action, eh? Put it right in action. So, <laughs> so those are if 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 anything, when people get a, a it's an incredible device, the Moxie, in the sense that we can see it live. Mm -hmm. We're pulling blood before, and I'm like, this is awesome because we only had heart rate and HRV before that, right? Yeah. All of a sudden we're pulling blood and we're getting the stuff, but there was a lot of false stuff coming out of there because it's systemic. Where's it coming from? Yeah. The breathing affects everything. So this guy breathes like this and this guy breathes like this and this guy's breathing with these. I said, that's changing the lactate for sure, for sure. Yeah. And, and what's this lactate point, like this threshold? What's the threshold? It's hot outside. It's totally different than it's cool, right? Guy just broke up with his girlfriend or boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like that's affecting every thought it changes your breathing. If you don't believe me, next time someone cuts you off and you're late going somewhere in your car, check your breathing. You'll hold your breath plus say a few words, right? Yeah. yeah. Now you become tense. That yeah. changes everything in your system. If you had a moxie, perfect is I had a moxie on heart rate monitor. I'm going for a run and the moxie's onto my watch, onto my Garmin watch. And I have alarm set on it. Cause I want, it was, a, I, I was playing. So I, I wanted, I wanted to stay in a certain range and the range was pretty tight and I'm running and all of a sudden this dog come out of the bushes rawr, 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 and lucky it had a collar on it, right? Pulled it back. But instantly whoop, I tightened up. My THB went down. I started using, I didn't, I really didn't move that much. Yes. I contracted a little bit, but it went down. And then all of a sudden the heart rate started shooting oh, yeah. up. So that's what I mean by playing is, is, is getting the technology, seeing it, it's live, right? Mm -hmm. What's happening? What's happening with it? And understand some basic things. The THP is the most important thing. There's a lot of guys um, like Evan Pecon and that, some really smart guys out there and they're just playing, playing the guy from Sean Steele we are talking about upside strength, you know, um, they're just doing so much great stuff and getting it out on, on, on the media. And they'll only show you like the SMO2. The, one of the major reasons, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, but I would think that they just don't want to confuse us when mm -hmm. people are 
You know what I mean? If you threw, here's the THB doing this and here's the SMO2, whoa. You know, that, and that's what Jurg and um, Andre Feldman, his son, um, you know, those guys at the, at the base floor, those two guys plus me, we were the ones that put this all, like, this is how you use this piece of equipment, right? We had to figure it out. We had to yeah. design an Excel sheet to see what we're seeing. But what those guys are saying is, if you just put the SMO2, it's easier to see. So when you, like you sent me some, some CSV files, right? Some pictures. Yeah. Right away, I look at the trend of one. I cannot look at both. It's just too confusing. Yep. So I always look at the THB first. You could go either way. What is the, what's the THB doing? What's the trend? Is it stable? Is it going up? Is it going down? Then I look at the SMO2. What's it? Mm -hmm. Pardon me. What's it doing? And now how is, how are they looking in, in this? It's not a model in the sense because models are always going to be disproved. The better the equipment. So I call it an ever-evolving ever idea. Yeah. Ideas. So an ever-evolving idea is that, um, felt, uh, Jürgen, that is, that there'll be, you start doing something, there'll be an increase, it'll plateau, and then you get to a point that drops. People will call that the threshold, right? To me, it's an ever moving point. And it's dropping because of what? You know, that's a little advanced. Is it dropping because of the breathing? Is it dropping because of the cardiac? Is it dropping because of the muscles? Is it dropping because of the thought? Is it dropping because of the, the heat? Why is it dropping? That's a different thing. But just basically, things when you start off at an easy pace, it'll it, it catch everything catches up, it'll go up, it'll level off. That's where I can keep on going, stable, nice and easy pace. You know, you and I running together, we could talk. That's that spot. Yeah. And as I, we pick our pace up, because some older guy than me jogs past as we're going, well, that's embarrassing. We got to go faster, right? All of a sudden, now it starts to drop. That's the trend. That's what I look for. When I look at a Moxie, I'm looking at THB. What's it doing? Okay, here's the trend in it. Now I look at the SMO2. What's it doing? Here's the trend. And then I look at both and see the trend of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So for, for people that are getting used to it now, and as you said, when they start, they'll often get, you, you're going to see a trend initially when they start the activity of a, a bit of a compression, a bit of a, like the garden hose or the smaller bottle, right? right. Uh, you go from the bigger bottle to the small, so to speak. And then, and then you see this line, you may see it drop a bit, or then that's all then looking at THB. That's what you're watching for. And if you keep that steady state for a period of time, if it's, if now you're going to watch to see if that goes up or if it continues to drop, you're kind of just watching that reaction first. And okay. I guess what you're getting at. So it may drop. And then you have this steady state using that analogy of us going for that jog. Yeah. And then the, uh, and then we see it just stay stable and then it drops again. And now we know that the delivery is no longer meeting the need. Uh, it's exceeding that. Perfect. Okay. So that, that, that's, that's great. Jason. So let's use that because that's the, when I, when I, uh, when I mentor people, you know, like with Evolve, we do this mentorship. So yep. we'll do the seminar, the webinar, you know, the seminars are so much better in the sense that we're, you got 20 guys in there and you're playing and that, it's just so much better, but yeah. still it's cool at the zoom. We can reach so many people. But when, when I'm mentoring a person, I just say like, get on a bike is easiest you can do it on a running treadmill or whatever but just for sim simplicity and just create a steady state something that's you know so you, you have two things you can play on the bike tension right mm -hmm. and you can play rpms how fast you're moving mm -hmm. just where it feels comfortable to you where everything just feels comfortable if you and i were biking together we could chat the whole the whole bike ride right it's a sunday enjoyable in the sun by the ocean in Nova Scotia, right? Yep. Um, so now when you get that steady state, so the THB is steady and the SMO2 is steady, whatever the numbers are, the, the, this is a steady state, just keeping the idea of a steady thing going. Ideally, you'd have your heart rate on there too, a monitor, mm -hmm. because heart rate alone, and we again, we have to look at the limitations and understand what we're talking about. Heart rate is just one part of the cardiac output mm -hmm. so here's the here's that picture when i 
when I work with people and, and, and share ideas with them is understand these pictures so that when I speak, you picture it in your head. Mm -hmm. I started with Jurg. It took me three to four years to get that one, because I didn't know the physiology like th those guys do like he did. So I recorded everything and then I'd go for a jog or a bike ride and I would listen to him over and over. And plus he spoke Swinglish, part Swiss, part English. He had to learn that too. But after a while, I could start picturing ahead of what he was talking about. And now, now we can have a conversation. So let's look at the cardiac system. The cardiac output, how much blood it can output, depends on how fast it beats, the heart rate, mm -hmm. and the volume. Mm -hmm. So a smaller person, five foot compared to a six, five person, probably they're going to have a different size of heart. Mm -hmm. The bigger person's probably going to pump the bigger volume. So he'll, so he could possibly have a less of a heart rate. And now you could mm -hmm. play those two, right? Yep. I could increase my heart rate or I could increase my volume. Well, that's pretty hard. People think of the heart. Well, let's just think of breathing. It's the exact same thing. I have respiratory frequency or I have the volume. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Right. So I could I could increase my total volume VE with both frequency and volume. Or I could just increase my VE, keep the volume the same. That's my same volume, but I'm increasing the frequency. Mm -hmm. Or I could slow the frequency down, but increase the volume. Can do the same the heart can do the same thing mm -hmm. okay so now you have your heart rate on and you have your moxie on and you have a stable you're on your bike and you found the perfect sunday ride everything is stable now just start playing with the respiratory just instead of say i'm a, just to make it simple in inhalation two seconds exhalation two seconds maybe that's my my normal breathing rate. So I'm on the bike here and I could one Mississippi two in one Mississippi two out. If I'm jogging, we teach our athletes. That might be a four, four, four steps, inhale, four steps, exhale. I could do that for hours. Okay. Go three, three. I could do it less time Two two. while I'm in trouble. Right. But on the bike, just find that normal pace, everything steady state. And all of a sudden, you just slow it down. Make the inhalation three seconds and the exhalation four seconds. And even better, if you could make the exhalation even longer. So maybe three second inhale, five or six second exhale. Just play. And then you'll start to see how changing your breathing will affect the heart rate, the THB, and the SMO2. Mm-hmm. If all of a sudden I'm just steady state there and the THB at first it'll go down a bit and then it'll start to come up and it starts to come up. That means, and you, you mentioned this already, there's delivery and there's using it, right? Mm -hmm. You put the gasoline in your car, you load it up the gas tank, you drive it. Now you're using the gas. That's the same as here. Energy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Moxie is watching, is looking at the amount of blood flow and the oxygen on that blood flow. So I'm steady state. What I'm delivering is exactly what I'm using. But I just change play with the breathing and all of a sudden it, it'll start. If I can increase my CO2 just a bit, the THB might go up and the SMO2 might drop down, but I'm going to stay in the same steady state. Mm -hmm. That's the illusion. This is what we have, the cavite emptor, be aware of that. What's happening is I'm, I'm changing my breathing so I'm, I'm have more blood flow in the muscle. I have a bigger jar. I have the same SMO2, it's just there's more blood in there so that it looks like there's less SMO2 in there. Mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be, but if I'm going to steady state, why would it be less? I've actually brought more blood, so there should be more in the sense of more opening up, but it looks like the, the SMO2 is going down or vice versa. I change my breathing in a certain way that 
the THB goes down a little bit. I've, I've constricted my blood vessels. So less blood flow to the leg. What will the SMO2 do? Right away, it'll go up because the jar is smaller. Mm -hmm. Now, if I start pedaling faster, I turn the tension up from level one to level two, or I change the RPMs, go a little faster, or both. Now I'm putting a compression force, the THB will go down, and I'm going to use more oxygen because mechanical energy. Mm -hmm. Two things that are different. One mechanical, two, I'm just changing another system. Yeah. I'm playing with my breathing, so I'm either creating a vaso, or do you say vasodilation, or a constriction. Mm -hmm. That's how you see those different pictures. Yep. That's really helpful to, to explain the show how you have to look at both pieces of the puzzle as we're operating, because that tank has a lot to do with the amount that you see in terms of SMO2. Not to, so, even though, for instance, like somebody might say, I'm going to do a recovery ride today, mm. but then so they see SMO2 going up the entire time, but the THB has gone down the entire time. So, you see THB drops in that compression and that stays. Is that really happening in that context? Is basically what you're saying, or vice versa. I think I'm going to do this. So, you get more carbon dioxide, you do the opposite, you get more carbon dioxide in the system, and then you know, the body thinks, Oh, I got to deal with that and then it makes it work a little differently by creating more opening the left more um more through the pipe but it's yeah. not it's not necessarily that because there's more what you're saying is not because there's because there's more information going through or more blood going through the pipe it doesn't mean that you're dropping oxygen it just means that there's just more blood and that percentage is low relative to the amount of blood that's what you're saying exactly need so it, what's interesting is you were talking about getting doing these things way back i mean and you were talking about using heart rate which is interesting because you get cardiac drift which is interesting mm. so like you know so if you were doing this steady state so maybe that might be interesting for people to see what you you, you know as you talk about you're watching smo2 and uh thb cruising along but if you were just using heart rate what might you see in that steady state right so if I said today, so today we said on our jog, um, hey, Brian, I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going to use Moxie today. I'm going to go by heart rate. Okay, I'm going to go, let's keep our heart rate at uh, 130, mm -hmm. right? So we start out because that's, you know, people use heart rate, right? So we said, okay, I'm going to go out to, let's go out today and we're going to go for that jog. And we started at 130 initially, right? But we're, what we're going to try to do is we're going to watch um, our, our moxie readings, right? So we're going to watch THB uh, and uh, SMO2. And we want to keep those, let's say, steady, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but we're going to keep under 130 heart rate, right? Let's just watch to see what's happening. What might we see there in that context from your experience that people, if using, like, what's the difference between using just moxie or just heart rate or, or using both together? Is that, okay. Is that okay? Yeah, 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 sure. So there's a couple things um, for, to, to, to get in mind before we, because th that's a great question. And <clears throat> let's take a step backwards. Let's look at VO2. You know, that was the golden standard, right? That was the thing, you know, save your money so you get a VO2 test and then you'll see how good you can be on the ice. So I did. It had nothing to do with how good I'm on the ice, right? Just gave me yep. some great number. You know, gives me 65. What's, well, what's 65? How do I train that? What, give me something, man. Like, I got to work with this now. You give me a number. What do I do with that? So then I'm like, I was very disappointed because I saved up my money to get that freaking test, right? And all I got was a number. And then there's, that's a really good number. Well, does that tell me I score 40 goals, right? My buddy got a better number. He's got freaking 10 goals. Didn't help him at all, right? Yeah. yeah. So he can say, oh, my VO2 is better than you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on the first line, you're on the fourth line, right? Like, yeah. what line would you rather be? What VO2 would you? So VO2, the definition is cardiac output times the oxygen difference, arterial minus venous, yeah. right? Cardiac output times the O2 difference. I never 
I never knew they tested the cardiac output when they did that VO2 test on me. All they did was put this big mask on me and had me ride this bike like crazy until I was spitting and sweating and everything. Where's the cardiac output in there? Yeah. None. Now, where's the arterial minus venous? Right? Yeah. So uh, the MOXIE and a heart rate monitor can show you that definition. Mm-hmm. The yep. VO2 machine doesn't give you that definition. Now, the VO2 machine gives us a lot of super important thing. How fast am I breathing and how deep am I breathing and how do those work together? Mm -hmm. That's what that's the numbers I wanted from those guys that I could play with. Yeah. I didn't have the technology to play now like I do now, but you give me those numbers, then we can play. So once we understand that Let's look at the heart rate. The heart rate, all it's giving me is the heart rate. It doesn't give me the stroke volume. By itself, it's really useless. Mm -hmm. right? Now, I, I'm not cutting anything. I'm just saying, just tell me different. Like I train with the heart rate. I, Jurg and I dove into the heart rate, HRV, laying down, standing up, all those different things. Hold my breath, just play, 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 pull the blood, do this, do that. It's like lactate. What does lactate give me? It gives me some really inf cool information, right? But it's systemic, right? I'll ask you this on lactate. We have an athlete, the world champion, and he won the Giro d'Italia, so in, in cycling. Yep. He, we have all the equipment on him. He gives her as hard as he can. We pull the lactate at the end of the sprint. 22 millimoles, huge. Recover him fully. He does the exact same output it was unbelievable but he's a pro so he can produce the exact same output we pull the lactate it's 12 millimoles why oh. and we're like he's using lactate as an energy source for the next shift for the next sprint mm -hmm. awesome lactate's an energy source it does other stuff too but once we saw that we're like wow okay heart rate let's go to heart rate now Heart rate is giving me how fast my heart's beating, all depending on how I'm breathing. My breathing changes my heart rate. How I have a thought changes my heart rate. Jump on a bike, get a steady state going, just have the heart, if you could have the moxie on it'd be so much better. But have if you could, moxie and heart rate. And put on some of your favorite easy going listening music and just watch, just pedal away. And when a thought comes in, just try and go into the tunes. Stay with the music. Don't, you know, how we get taken away by that. You, you get in your car and you're, you get into a good thought and you get to the grocery store. You don't even know how you got there. You're an autopilot, right? Yeah. No, no. Stay with the music. And then after five or 10 minutes, because you need about eight minutes of steady state to get kind of get everything balanced. And after about eight minutes, throw some ACDC, some Metallica on some of their hardcore stuff and keep that steady state going and see what happens to your systems. Mm-hmm. That's just your mind affecting the systems, which changes your breathing. Your mind changes your breathing and your breathing can change your mind. Once those change, you're going steady state. You're going to see things change. Okay. Now I have the heart rate on. Now that we understand that. Oh, the last thing. When we put uh, an, uh, a moxie on us, we were in, in Davos, uh, Switzerland. And my, me my mentor, Jörg, says, we're going to do hockey explosive 45 degree jumps up this mountain right to that restaurant way up there. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. I'm 48 years old. I show the athletes a couple of those in the gym because I look good doing two. But if you had me do eight, I'd fall apart. <laughs> and you want yeah. me to do that up that mountain? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going to go by the moxie. So before you get into trouble, before you feel it. So what we're talking about, if you watch a moxie, the SMO2 and the THB are dropping. If the mock, if the SMO2 flatlines, that's a problem. A coach's eye will see that the coordination changes. In hockey, they'll come out of their skating stance. In running, you'll see the feet might come out. Their different muscles are going to have to do some work to compensate. Um, the THB might go up, switch from a compression to a venous occlusion. Mm -hmm. and even worse if that's a word to an arterial so anyways there was myself a, a, a 
player. She was my trainer. She was playing over in Europe, hockey, very good athlete, excellent athlete. Her, uh, Jurg's two sons, but the one son was doing something different. The one son, son, Andre, who climbs mountains and is really strong, but never, ever has done explosive hockey jumps up a mountain. Mm -hmm. We started doing these. Yep. And as soon as I could feel it, I'd stop because the moxie was going to a watch an old Garmin. So it was just numbers. So say I was going from 80 down to 10, just before it started to get to 10, 10, 9, 9, 9, just before it got, you know, 11, boom, I stopped. Recover fully and keep on going. I got to the restaurant and in my, like there was people hiking in there taking pictures, like look at these crazy people. And in my mind, I'm like, that should have never happened. I, I was anaerobic. Mm. I should, those energy sources, my glycogen, creatine, phosphate, they should have all been whew, done. But here I am still feeling awesome. I kept on going up even a steeper incline because I couldn't, it just didn't make sense in my, I couldn't picture it. Mm -hmm. Then I come back down, um, Shelby, the, the hockey athlete, and Andre there, there, and Jurg. Andre fell apart right away because his muscles could not do that movement pattern. That was the limitations. He's just not used to that. It, no way. Yep. Shelby, she does it all the time, but she tried to stay with me. Mm. She would get down to that 10, 10, 10, 9, 9, and she was going into a survival mode and she fell apart. Her body just said, that's enough. It's done. So we were walking down the mountain and walking very slowly now because I was cooked for seven days after my muscles were just shot. And I said to him, I looked at him, I said, we just blew apart the anaerobic aerobic model, didn't we? He said, yeah. I said, yeah, that's it. So that's why the ever evolving idea. So when we talk about that, we no, no longer do we think anaerobic first, slow down into aerobic. Because as soon as you put a mox and start running, biking, squatting, what's going down? Oxygen, you're using oxygen. So not a model that we've designed, um, uh, Aaron and I, it's, it's an ever evolving idea. And coaches, top coaches, they see it automatically, the coach's eye. An athlete's running and all of a sudden, boom, the coordination changes, they know right away, right? You're watching a hockey player skate, all of a sudden he starts to come out of a skating stance, he's changed his coordination pattern. That is on the moxie, as soon as the, the SMO2 is going down, as soon as it starts to flatline, the THB will show you first, a second yep. or two before, it'll change, it'll deflect. That's when they switch from optimal performance coordination to survival. Okay. So now we have an athlete, like you said, has a heart rate monitor on. You want to keep it the low 130, and you want to keep the steady state THB and SMO2. So they're just jogging or biking. Here's my first question. Why 130? Mm -hmm. Why does 130 have to be? Why, why 120? Let's start instead of with the, with the moxie before I need a distance or time to train. And we used it, we matched it to the sport. So soccer players, a, a midfielder does a different, he's always moving. A forward is more sprinting. You're full, you know what I mean? So you could, you could adjust your training because you had some time and you had performance numbers that you would design the training program. So that was, e the game was easy. Mm -hmm. Well, you got, you got to skate for 30 seconds full out and then rest for two minutes. Well, let's skate for 35 seconds full out and rest for only a minute 30, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. the game will seem easy. When a physiology like the Moxie comes and it's live, why wouldn't we train with the physiology to get the numbers? Mm -hmm. So let's see what Jason can do right now. He skates full out, a skating pattern, doing hockey. 17 seconds, he starts to fall apart. Oh, what if we get that 18 seconds? How do we train now? Now we know 17 seconds, he switches into survival. We want to train that to get 18 seconds because one second on the ice at a pro level is four meters. Mm -hmm. But he has to go into survival sometimes. Well, we're going to see that way too. So he goes into survival, flat lines, and then he can only hold that for about 10 seconds and it starts to come up. That means something's changing there. Can we make that survival 12 seconds? How about recovery time? So now we use the physiology to determine the numbers and then take those numbers and say, this is what the sport does. 
17 seconds, plus or minus three, full load. That's what every hockey player does. Let's train it to get 18 seconds, 19 seconds. 20, can we get 21 seconds? Can we be an outlier? So now we put that heart rate monitor on, what you're saying, and the THB and the SMO2 and steady state. I have to think now, okay, cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. I got a steady state heart rate going. That's my heart rate. Mm -hmm. What's THB? That's volume, mm -hmm. That's blood volume. If they're both steady state, now I have cardiac output, heart rate times stroke volume. If I could keep that steady state, heart rate, say it's at 120, and my THB is steady state, and I change my breathing and the SMO2 starts to go up, sorry, the THB starts to go up. Mm -hmm. Steady state heart rate, THB starts to go up. That means I'm increasing my stroke volume. Mm -hmm. I have a less, I have more time between the beats, more efficiency. Mm -hmm. That means I can remodel my heart, my cardiac system. What if I could keep a steady state heart rate, increase the THB and load more oxygen? Because remember the jar size is changing, mm -hmm. going up, but I'm mechanically moving, don't forget. Mm -hmm. Now, three things, and this is really important to understand and know these three things inside out. And they have the same letters, so that makes it easier for a max hockey player. So things are gonna be simple for Cozy. Muscle metabolism, MM. As I move, I burn the oxygen, it goes down, the CO2 level goes up. That changes everything in here. Second thing is respiratory rate, RR. How fast I breathe and the volume, that changes everything. There's dead space in here. The faster I breathe, the more dead space, the higher the CO2 goes, the lower the oxygen goes. It always goes back to that balancing. The third one is CC, CO2 chemoreceptors. In our head, there's no O2 sensors, there's CO2 sensors. And it keeps me in that safety range. Remember that balancing of O2, CO2? It keeps me in this range. As I get up, I'm because I'm jogging, as I go up, now the chemoreceptor can kick in and say, whoa, 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 we got to shut you down. And we talked about this. It creates a limited blood flow, metabolic reflex. There's a couple of different ways it can slow you down. Mm -hmm. So as I have the heart rate on, monitor on, and I have the THB, I start to play around. And the heart rate, if I can keep it stable, the, S, the THB goes up, I'm increasing my stroke volume. If I can load more oxygen on there, at a higher CO2 level, well, the research says, no, no, no. That doesn't make sense. Well, we know it does because we've produced it over a thousand times. We can do it. It takes time. It takes playing, right? But now you can see it live with the technology. Yeah. So what you're really talking about is when one is changing, the other one's changing. So you just can't, like it's, it's this relationship that's existing at all times. And to look at one measure, you're really missing some of the picture but having this all together lets you see everything um, and really make good decisions. So uh, got to finish up soon. If I could ask you one thing, you, you talked yeah. about when you got this equipment. Um, I know that if anybody's interested in more in the, in the uh, training component, you talk, about, you, you go through that in the course about the rip test mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a real a lovely experience. Uh, <laughs> it just feels great to do that. Uh, multiple reps uh, and what you just throw up in your mouth um but but it's uh no uh it reminds me of the wind gate right yeah you know but you just do several uh <laughs> yeah. i remember you telling the story about how you made the first guy do like 60 seconds uh and then he, he was he was done for the day <laughs> i think you said that was probably too long <laughs> just a bit <laughs> yeah just a bit right um so when when you got this equipment um how did it change your training or how can people like if you think about people using moxie so we're learning about it you're talking about all these fantastic relationships happening mm -hmm. so what so what 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 am i supposed to do with it now yeah like yeah. if i if i'm working with an athlete like so you work with a lot of acyclical athletes right mm -hmm. um versus a cyclical 
athlete, what might be some of the ways that people can take this now and say, okay, what am I going to do with this information? Mm, beautiful. Okay. So with both, <clears throat> Jörg says endurance is everything. Acyclic, cyclic, you know what I mean? Endurance, yeah. there's two types of endurance. There's that kind of steady state, right? For a long time, or yeah. there's repeatability. Go full out, recover, full out, recover, full out, recover. So basically when you get the equipment, just use it in your sport, right? Endurance is so easy. I put the Moxie on, boom, I got my Garmin watch. I go at race pace, right? Go at race pace and see what happens. And then, okay, how could I get a little better, right? So say my training is they want me to run uh, for five minutes or 10 minutes at a certain pace, that's 70% of my race pace, right? Mm -hmm. But look what's happening on the Moxie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And simple, and either even simple, I just start below my race pace. Both things go down, THB and SMO2, then everything catches up, it goes up. And then it goes up, right? I go a little faster, it'll drop. So say it's at this level, at uh, a four, four tempo, four steps, Inhale, four steps, exhale. I go a three, three tempo. Everything drops down here, but it goes steady state after a bit. Oh, I could do that. Two, two tempo. It goes down here. I can last 20 seconds and I fall apart. Yep. Okay. Run your race, right? So I'm running my race at my race pace at, at, at right now. And all of a sudden someone goes by me. Oh, I go to a three, three tempo. Oh, I can maintain that. And now this old guy with gray hair, cozy runs by me. Okay, well, we got about 200 meters left for the thing. I've still got that in the tank. I know I can go down to a 2-2 pace, right? Or a 1-1 yep. pace and last for 10 seconds or 12 seconds. Now you have the physiological picture of what's going on. Now you go back and you train that. If I change my breathing, get my breathing more efficient, that 4-4 four, four pace, what if I could do that at a 3-3 three, three pace and keep the same numbers at a 4-4 four, four pace just by playing with my breathing? What if I work the left side of my heart and restructure that, that I could be more efficient and more coordinated and run at a 2-2 pace for 40 seconds? That would give me a bigger kick at the end. That's live. Mm -hmm. Yep. Acyclic, the endurance of going full out and recovering, it's about the recovery. Mm -hmm. So I can go 17 seconds and it full out and it takes me two minutes to recover. I want 18 seconds. And I want to recover in 90 seconds. Well, how can I do that? Okay. So now I take that training. And the most important thing about training is the recovery. This is an argument I have with, with Aaron is, and Jörg said this, there's no such thing as overtraining. It's just not recovered, mm -hmm. which results in underperforming. Yeah. If whatever workout, you, you drag yourself out of the gym, as long as I give you enough recovery, you'll come back even stronger. The yep. problem is if you drag yourself out of the gym and two days later, I put through another workout, we're going to get into a chronic survival mode. And that's what we see in a lot of athletes. What does that show up as the, on the moxie? Two things. Say my normal, I come into the gym and I put my heart rate monitor on, put my moxie on, right? I might even put a breathing machine on if I have that ability, depending if I'm not feeling well. But anyways, I get on there and normally my warm up and normally my moxie is SMO2 80% THB say it's 12.5. Well, all of a sudden I get on there at 60 SMO2 instead of 80 and 11.9 is 12.5. Something's off today, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's an ASIC athlete. So we get him to do a little sprint. So he sprints and both should drop down. But this time he sprints and the THB actually goes up and the SMO2 goes up, and when he stops, they both go down. And you're like, mm. do that again. <laughs> goes again, and he's hurting. They both go up or stay stable, and when he stops, they go down. Why? Well, that's the question I asked Aaron when I first, second time I met him, and deciding who am I going to partner up with. I have, I recorded that. I got about, uh, I think about 90 minutes of him describing that down to the cellular level. Basically, mm -hmm. we put the hurt on them. The cells are damaged. If you put a had a fit made on them and put the or um, 
you tested their cell, their phase angle, you'd see that the cells are cooked, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the cells cannot handle that oxygen. So it doesn't use the oxygen and uses other energy sources to do the, because you're still riding the bike going full out, the sprint. And then why does the oxygen drop after? Because it needs oxygen to replace, to, to refuel the creatine phosphate, the glycogen. Then you know for mm -hmm. sure the guy's cooked. So it's the recovery part of it. So how do we use it? One, you put two moxies on whatever sport you're in and figure out if there's a balance in, in the system. Mm -hmm. If there's not, you've got to get realigned and get that fixed, right? Or there's been an injury and you haven't grown enough highways to do that. Two, make sure they're recovered. If you love working your guys so freaking hard, keep doing it. There's going to be problems, but keep doing it. There's a more efficient way in that if you're going to work them hard, make sure they're recovered so you can work hard again. Yep. They'll last longer. They're still going to get into trouble. Or you can figure out now, I can, I have a guy doing, I say, I have a guy doing 20 sprints, right? Sprint, recover, sprint, recover, sprint, recover. Over a couple months, he can do 40. But he still needs that survival in the game. So once he gets the tendons, ligaments, muscles, everything's really good, healthy. Once we get him, say, up to 20, 25, 30, I'm going to throw, at the end of the week, a survival tree. I'm going to push him through the hell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep yeah. that SMO2 THB down there. That might take me three or four days to recover him, but he's going to come back stronger. And then we go back and just dose in the optimal performance. And then all of a sudden we give them survival. Our top guys at certain parts in the training, we could give them two survivals in a week because they're sleeping, their nutrition, their thinking, their breathing. Wow. When they, when you push guys that hard and you have two devices, the Panoli and the, the, the VO2 master, put the, the one of them on them. The VO2 will be easier, the master, because it's just simple right there. Have them lay down and recover. Their breathing will be out. Mm -hmm. If you have them normal, any workout will take their breathing out. They will not start to recover until their breathing recovers. What if their breathing never gets back to that? What as, as you're getting towards training camp, this guy, he's not lifting the same weight. Something's off, you know what I mean? Because his breathing's off. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you a huge, people a huge hint there. As soon as you finish working out, get your breathing back in the into normal, then the kidneys and everything else can recover. Then you can go back to homostasis. Good. Nice. That's some great tips right there. So just to summarize this up, if you, uh, thanks for sharing all this. Awesome. And uh, if people want to find it more, they can find it at Evolve, learn yep. from your webinar and then yep. the, and then the internships uh, or mentorships. Yep. Um, and so basically moxie when we talk about you've talked about some different ways we can look at it and analyzing the actual information in terms of how the state is today mm -hmm. uh how comparing it to usual states we got to get used to using it and looking at what's norm normal um and then also looking at how it can be used for recovery to see if you're going to punish your athlete or client um again that day you can almost pop it on to get an idea of how you might even adjust training as well Exactly. Would that be about it? That, that's well. There's more. But the, there's lots. Of, I could talk all day with this. Honestly, <laughs> I, I like listening to you talk about this. It's like, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's uh, it's really a wonderful experience for me. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time and sharing with me. My it's pleasure. Awesome. Yeah, and remember, uh, maybe remember, this is going to cost you when I get in that RV when they finally open up the country again. I'm coming that way, so I've never been to the coast there. Oh, I, I was serious. You let me know when you come. Uh, I got a lovely boat too. We can get out around the islands. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of great whites here now too. They're, uh, you can, if you want to find out about them, they come here every year now and they're tagging them. Um, uh, a friend of mine, you know, the Oak Island show, the TV show. Yeah. 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 So a buddy of mine dies for that show. And so, um, last year, um, he, he was telling me last September, they did this documentary and, uh, I think it was between Mahone Bay and Shelburne. So it's a, it's two communities, um, probably a, an hour or two apart. I mean, in terms of driving mm -hmm. and they said they found, he said they found 17 great whites within 50 yards of shore. Wow. 
and not one was tagged. Wow. Wow. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, now we know the only the ones that are tagged and they're coming out and finding one they got here last year, I think was uh, a female and she was 17 feet. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look forward to, uh, and maybe we could do this sometime. And uh, I look forward to when you come down. It'll be great. Yes. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Take care. And you'll just.